to work with Eddie Murphy is like there's you know it's like a, for me it's just like a dream come true. Yeah, I'm from New Zealand, so when you come to Hollywood, it's like there's a few things you want to do. One of them, you want to work with Eddie Murphy. It's it's good. It's fun. The script's got an interesting premise. You know, it's got a spiritual thing going on where 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 Jack Eddie Murphy he's got a he's got to evolve because he's got a lot of great things in his life and and if he doesn't wake up he's gonna he's gonna miss the boat so so the story is just about sort of appreciating I think what we have counting our blessings and appreciating what we've got in our life he's one of those um, spiritual type guys that sell books and tell people how to live. Dr. Singer's got a new book and Jack is gonna try to get the rights and he's gonna sell that book and he's gonna make himself a lot of money. Dr. Singer's not really in control but he's a spiritual guy so he kind of understands there's a connection between mystical events and and nature and Jack and Jack and the tree. So, so I, I think Dr. Sinja is sort of as surprised by the tree as anybody else, but he's a kind of spiritual guy, so he, he's kind of in tune with it. He's like, oh, wow, this is cool. A tree by the swimming pool. I think that's interesting. I'm not, I'm not seen, I've not seen this before. Let's see where it goes. So he's up for the, Dr. Sinja sort of into the, into the adventure of it and is open to the idea of helping Jack. Jack comes to Dr. Singer so he can get his book, get Dr. Singer's book and sell the book and make a lot of money. But Dr. Singer realizes that Jack is actually really lost. He is, Jack has not got a clue about himself. He hasn't got a clue about life. He's just gone, you know, a million miles an hour and he's just, he's ready, he, he's ready to crash. So when the tree turns up in his backyard, Dr. Singer doesn't really understand. He doesn't know that's going to happen. He's not in control of the thing, but he can see that, you know, events in our lives are sent there to help us. You know, and I think that's the message. Brian sort of sent me um, he, some tapes by a guy called um, Eckhart Tolle. And uh, I've tried to sort of emulate his voice a little. And uh, so there's an odd mix, you know, it's like, kind of look a little bit like Deepak Chopra, but sound a little bit like Eckhart Tolle. And uh, that's just to keep it interesting. And for me, that's fun, because I, I do a lot of dramatic work and I just wanted to do something. I'm not necessarily playing a comic role, but just something that's uh, lighter and easier and more fun to go to work. He's really professional and I try to be professional when I'm working with um, iconic kind of movie stars like that. I just be professional and turn up and do my job and stay out of the way. So I don't, I don't really mix it up that much. I just, uh, just happy to be there and watch him work. Watch him do his things like super focused and you can tell he preps his work and when he turns it on it's like bang it's like like a you know thousand volts he just like turns it on he's amazing he's a genius Eddie Murphy is a genius there's no doubt and it's just a pleasure to just be on set and watch him and and just tell all my friends yeah doing the movie with Eddie Murphy it's cool what keeps it interesting for me is like playing different roles and different types of movies and doing little independent movies back home and then doing a big Hollywood movie here and when I say back home, back home in New Zealand or Aotearoa, you know, when I go home I do little independent things and come here and do bigger things and it keeps life interesting for me so it's good. What I like about uh, Brian's um, directing as far as I can tell is he, he storyboards stuff like a lot and he's really clear about what his shots are um, and um, and uh, so there's not a lot of guessing going on which is good 